Hey guys, Joe here, doing a short one here on the channel because, number one, I haven't done a video in like five months, but also number two, because I'm editing an entire video on how I just built a really nice X99 with a 6950X, custom water cooling, all that loopity doopity stuff, and I'm not using it anymore. There's a very good reason for that. As you can see, this is a system built into an old Corsair something or other case. It's something I had laying around. Look at that. After but I threw this system together because I was able, and you're going to question why I did this, but I was able, hi, how are you, to trade my EVGA 3090 for the Win 3. Yes, I traded it away. Now's the best time to do that, especially considering what I got for it was an ROG Crosshair, uh, there you go, Crosshair 8 dark hero. So this is an X570 board. Basically the best of the best of the best of the best of the best has the darker theme to it. It's not that all super lit up thing. A 5950X and a 360 millimeter water cooler that is tilty. I don't even know what that says. What did that say? Dragon. I got to fix the way that thing is orientated, but it's working great. So I got all of that for my 3090. Now do the math. Do the math, kids. Do the math. If you go to Best Buy, the 5950X, yes, it's one generation old, but the 5950X is like a $450 CPU after tax, close to $500 here in Virginia. The ROG Dark Hero motherboard still sells used for over $200. And a 360mm AIO, not 100% sure. Hi. What are you doing? I don't wear glasses anymore. My hair's fucked up. But anyways, the 360 mil AIO, uh, that would normally sell for like 130 to 150 bucks. So altogether, brand new, this system would cost somewhere in the neighborhood of about 850 bucks. And I traded a graphics card that would sell for about 750 on eBay, and after which it would come back down with fees and everything, probably to about 625 bucks. And I was getting ready to do it because I'm kind of thinking about pulling the trigger on a 4090. And I also wanted a more consistent test rig for GPUs. As you can see in there, I've got a 2060 Super. The guy I bought it from, he's like a super tech flipper. So I got like that 1080, that 2060 Super, which I had to repaste because that was a mining card and it was really loud. I'm going to show you guys a trick on how to fix that. I think I missed like syllables and shit in there. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. But I also threw a thousand watt PSU in there to run any graphics card I want to. A couple of dedicated drives for my Steam stuff. But this thing has couple of nice M.2s, and as you can see, I got a PCIe uh, riser card in there for um, Sabrent for another 2 terabyte SSD that I'm running. 2 terabyte SSDs, da huacha, kuwapa. 2 terabyte SSDs have dropped in price dramatically. You can get 2 terabyte 980 Evos for like under 100 bucks, so keep your eyes out. Hold on a second. Sorry, I just had some dinner. But yeah, I don't have a rear fan in there, obviously, because... Cables are a little bit close, but uh, let me show you something. And yes, I watch Linus Tech Tips because Linus is techy and he's tippy. He's Linus Techy tippy. He's tippy. I'm talking to. Anyways, here you go. Ryzen 9. 5950X 16 core processor. Yes, it's R15. I've run it in all of them, but R15 is a quick one. My 6950X with my best possible overclock at 4.4 gigahertz without doing a lot of tuning to the motherboard, plus I need a better motherboard. That computer's not going away. It's going somewhere else, but I just I wanted a more stable testing CPU. But as you can see, over twice as fast with only six more cores and 12 more threads and a lot newer architecture and the same number of PCIe lanes, which means I can run all kinds of stuff like a Gen 4 980 SSD 2 terabyte up there and a 980 2 terabyte SSD down there and all of this stuff. These will be, be eventually going away. Excuse me. English, not my first language, but I will be eventually getting rid of those drives because I'm going to go all NVMe, even if I have to do a uh, card to put four or more on there. One thing I did notice is that this board does not have the U.DIM, so you can't add extra SSDs up there. But again, I just have them in a PCIe slot. Even if running at a Gen 2, Gen 3 speed, they will still be faster than, well, spitting rust. As for the case, it was just an old carbide case that the X99 actually came in. 
and I thought it looked good and I threw a couple of ring 140s instead of running the Corsair 140s and when the side panel's on it you don't hear the fans as much. I have them cranked up because well they're plugged into a fan controller that I can't slow down and I will be slowing them down because I ordered a fan controller but fan controller hasn't arrived yet. That drive was just thinking. Think, think, think. But anyways, let's do a live run of a Cinebench. Just to show you how fast this thing actually is. Fast as fuck, boy. This is why 20 and 23 have been released, obviously. Because when you run this fast, it really barely gives a CPU time to ramp up. In fact, let's run 20. No, I don't want to save that one. It wasn't as good as the first one. But R20, live benchmark. I'm also locked at 4.2 gigahertz. I haven't really played with it. Obviously, I could run faster, but let's see what kind of score we get because these are really good scores. The 8-core processor from back in the day was 3455. 16-core Threadripper is at 6670. So let's see what this guy does. Look at it. Just chew, chew, chew. Chew, chew. Does a lot of stuff. Chili. I know. That was stupid. Come on, finish. Finish, man. We don't got them kind of times. But yeah, if you look at that, look at that, man. Just crushes the old 16 core 32 thread 1950X, which was a beast of a processor. Yeah, it wasn't the top of the line, but Threadripper was an HEDT. Still want one. Haven't actually owned one. And I'm keeping my eyes open because I'm going to get the full HEDT lineup. I'm even going to get a dual Opteron system because I'm stupid. But yeah, as you can see, 60 core, 128 thread, Xeon did 12.9, and I'm assuming that was a dual uh, socket motherboard. Same thing with that Xeon up there. I know that's a pretty badass thing, but yeah, almost 10,000 points, and that's with a bunch of other shite running in the background. I'm good with that. Also, love filming this way. Also, am I sad that I don't have my 3090? Kind of, but a 2060 Super, I have a 1080 Ti, I've got all kinds of different stuff that I could run in the meantime. Just to get me by while I sell a bunch of the old stuff because I have an entire stack of cards I'm not using once I make the videos. I'm going to keep like that OC, wherever it went, 980 Ti and probably one of my 1080 Ti's. But the rest of the cards will probably get sold on to recoup some of my dough. And I think I have enough cards laying around to actually pay for a 4090. So if I do that, I'll let you know. And then this system will be one of the fastest up until you go with like a 7 Series with DDR5. But uh, Trident Z Royal, look at it, how fancy that is. 64 gigs and dual channel. Yeah. Doesn't get much better than this for an everyday gaming machine, except for obviously that. But 3090s are old, man. Old tech. Old. It's technology. What you going to do? I'm out of here. It's been 7 minutes and 37 seconds. I'm out. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave them down below. If you think it's kind of funny that I put it into an old-ass case that has an optical drive bay, let me know. I may just leave it like that because you can see it's running pretty cool. I think it maxes out at like 62 degrees on the package. Yeah, and if that is the case, I'd be happy with that. But for now, it's just going to sit here underneath my plaque that you guys helped me get. So don't, get, uh, don't forget to get subscribed to that one too. And as always... We'll talk to you later, sir.